Hey guys, um, just a little preview of our CE retreat that we're doing on the uh, August 3rd through 5th uh, with Donnie Murray's group, Are You Numb Yet? Um, we're going to be covering implant restorations, restorative implant guides, and implant provisionals, uh, and it's going to be a really, really fun time out, out there at the Foundry. So before we uh, get going here, I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Wally Renee. And if you don't know, I'm at the Medical University of South Carolina, where I have colleagues that are my, my best friends and also a dream team of, of knowledge and clinicians that we work together on a lot of these cases that I show. So they're the power behind a lot of what I do, and, and they're far surpassed my abilities and what I'm capable of. What's cool is you'll you'll find some of us all working together with Donnie at the Are You Numb Yet courses. Uh, these if you haven't been to one of these, these CE seminars are a lot about camaraderie and um, friendship and, and building relationships that last beyond just the duration of the course. I'm going to be showing you the true abutment workflow. The true abutment workflow is really easy, um, but a lot of people have questions about how they get the scan body scans and what all different types of scans need to be sent and, and quality control. So the first step, uh, what you need to do is just basically scan the edentulous area and the adjacent teeth. Um, you could use the plan scan, you could use the emerald. Um, any any scanner that you, that you really have is going to work for this. The most important thing, however, for this initial scan is to capture enough teeth, enough data to get a good occlusal reference. So I like to go cross arch canine at least, even for this little single unit. And also, you have to capture those interproximal surfaces to get a good final restoration. So once you have that, you could copy it down to the lower, or you could, in the next version of the software, you'll have a scan body tab that you could scan under. It doesn't matter. You don't need that at all. So you could do this right now in basically any version of Plan Cat Easy. Then you uh, are going to screw in the true abutment scan body that you have to order through them. They're reusable, autoclavable, um, and you're going to uh, take a check shot to make sure that's seated and then you're going to scan that in and you have to rotate it and be pretty critical of yourself if you, like in this instance the tongue came over that area and I, I could have used active delete but I'm just going to erase that little spot and fill in that area making sure that flat surface you see right there is the most critical area to capture because that's going to help the lab align the, the DCM file of the scan body to the actual digital model for, for implant location. So it's really important to capture those surfaces. And then next, you're gonna scan the, the bite, uh, or the opposing, sorry. And, and of course, you, you don't really need a whole bunch for that. Um, you just need the occlusals and facials because this is gonna be all digitally designed and nothing's even gonna be printed um, for, for this part. So you don't have to necessarily worry about filling in everything. <clears throat> Once you have the opposing scan, you're going to get the maximum intercuspation. This is where you actually need to slow down your scanning. The slower you scan the bite, the faster it'll automatically articulate. And triple check your occlusion. Make sure that you have a good occlusion for the lab, that everything's um, working correctly. That's really it. So you're going to export all those different files, the scan body file and everything, to the true abutment. And true abutment is going to then almost the next day send you back photos of the abutment design, the screw access location, and then they're going to also send you a crown design photo. And you can give them input about different things and, and what you might want to tweak. But if you like it, they're actually going to send you an STL file of that crown design. So before you even get that abutment back, you're going to get this crown file, and then you open up the patient in PlanCat Easy, and you can do the import for milling. Um, and you're going to import the STL file of that crown, that true abutment design, and you're going to mill it in-house yourself on PlanMill 40, 40S, or 30S. Um, it doesn't really matter which, which mill you have. It's going to be able to work with this workflow. And so once you import that in, you're basically just going to go straight to the mill tab. It, it automatically takes you there, and you're going to do a couple simulations to check everything. So we're looking really good, a really crisp and cl clean file here. Um, and you could do a quick sim, but it doesn't really tell you too much. So go up to the settings and change your sim to speed to quality. And when you do that and you do a sim, it takes longer. 
and sim in detail and sim in standard and see what the difference is. Um, most of the time I'm milling in standard, but look for weird little things like that notch in the sprue or any kind of strange things that you might see. Move the sprue position around and redo the simulation. Um, and then go back up to the settings and change back to quality sim and sim that out under standard mode and detailed mode and see which one you like better. 99% of the time you just mill in standard mode. And then you're going to get that out and it is going to mill with the hole in it. Um, you might have a tiny little bit of flash that you need to remove but it, it's pretty much ready to go. And then you're just going to fire it and bond it onto the abutment, the custom abutment. These types of workflows are um, these kind of screw workflows we're going to talk about a lot at the course. So I look forward to seeing you guys there.